Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with multiple selects in your Flask app that use WT Forms in SQL Alchemy. So what I mean here is all this stuff comes from the database. So I have five children in the database and basically you can select any ones that you want. So I can do child one, two, and three, hit submit, and it will basically save this to the database for me and also pre-populate these things when I come back. And I have multiple, I call them parents in this case, that have uh, different children associations. So for example, this parent here has all five selected, whereas the first one only has the first three. And I can change that to be just four for the first one, and then we see it's pre-selected. So that's the idea. Also, I have it to where I can have checkboxes as well, and I'll show you how to do this in a code. It's pretty simple. And if you wanna use checkboxes instead of the default uh, select, you can. So this video is gonna cover like a really basic case and I think it's enough to get you started. But if you have any further questions on this and you want my help directly, I do have a coaching program. You can go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or you can just click on the link in the description below. And there, if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can. Uh, there's a link to fill out a form and then I can contact you and we can have a, a call and I can help you with any code that you have issues with. So not just SQL Alchemy, uh, not just WT Forms, but anything related to Flask or Python or Anything programming related, I can probably help you with. So if you need help, just look into my coaching program and I'd be happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So let's get into actually writing the code to do all the stuff that I've demonstrated here. Okay, so let me show you what I'm starting with here. I have this Flask app. I have a couple of models defined. I have an association table, a form, and then the rest of the stuff. So I'll start at the top. I have two models called parent and child. It should be obvious what those mean. In the context of this example, I wanted a very generic name, so it's very easy to keep track of what's going on. So we have parents and children. And then we also have this association table that connects the parents and children. So one parent can have multiple children and each child can belong to multiple parents in this particular example. And then I have a form here. So there's nothing in the form yet. And this is where I'm going to put the field uh, for my form. But for now, it just has pass. And then I define this route here. I instantiate the form, pass it to the template. And then inside of the template here, I have some styling and I just have the token. And visually it looks like this. There's a button, but there's no actual field. So this is what I'm starting with. So the first thing to do is I want to add a field onto my form. And this field would hold all the choices for the multiple selection options. And to do that, I'm going to import from uh, WT forms underscore alchemy. And I'm going to import something called a query select multiple field, right? So for this, you have to install WT forms alchemy. Just like this, I already have it installed, so there's nothing to do. But this is an extension to WD forms that you have to install when you want to kind of connect it with SQL alchemy. So I have that done. Now inside of my form, what I can do is I can actually add the field. So I can call this, let's say choices, choices equals this query select multiple field. And then I'll just pass the name choices here. And then inside of my uh, route here, what I want to do is on this form, on the choices, I want to pass an actual SQL Alchemy query. So I can do this, I can do form.choices. So that's the field I just defined. On choices, I have this attribute called query. And this is going to be equal to child.query.all, right? So it's going to take all the children I have in the database, put them on the query for the choices, and then WT Forms is going to generate the list of choices. So let me show you what's in my database. Let me just open up SQLite 3. So I have two tables, parent and child, that I wanna show you. So parent has three parents, so parent one, two, and three. And then child has five children one, two, three, four, five. And then the parent's child table has nothing in it at the moment. And of course, as I save things, you'll see some things in the database. So what I can do is I can save this and I can start my app. And it's this simple to get the choices to appear. So right here, nothing appears, but when I refresh, nothing still appears because I need to add it in the template. So let me just go ahead and do that. Form.choices. And now if I go back and refresh, we see I have the five children here. So one, two, three, four, five. So we see it has like child one, child two, child three. If I change the name here, so if I go to child, uh, one way I can do this is I can use the dunderstir 
and I can return something like self.name and then it will remove those angle brackets that you see here. So I can do this and now we see it just has like the name there. So that's where this display value is coming from. It's using the uh, Dunder name there. So now what I wanna do in my code is I want to see what this looks like when I actually save something. So what I can do inside of my route here is I can have an if block and I can say if form uh, dot validate on submit. So this is typical WT form stuff. I can just print form dot choices dot data, right? So I want to see what gets passed uh, as the data when I select something. So I'm going to use control to select, let's say child one, child two, or child one, child three, and child four. I'll hit submit. We see method not allowed. That's pretty easy to fix. Let me just go ahead and add that. So posts and also get, and I'll load the page again. I'll select one, three, and four, or one, three, and five, hit submit. And now we see here in my terminal, I see these actual objects. So you know these are SQL Alchemy objects when it has the little angle brackets around them. So I see child one, child three, and child five. And if I were to look at them more directly, so let's see the first one and then do dot ID, for example, I can do that. So I'll just hit submit again and we see one is the ID. If I were to change the zero to like two, it would give me the last ID, which I think is five here. So yeah, five as the ID. So what you get in return from this is a list of objects, a list of SQL Alchemy objects. And this is really important because that goes into the next step of actually saving it to the database. So the way to save this is what I can do is I can first query for a parent. So for now, we'll just put all these on the first parent. So I can do parent.query.first, which will give me parent one. And then what I want to do is I want to first erase all the existing relationships. And the reason why I'm erasing everything is because I want to completely overwrite anything that was there. So if in the previous case where I saved, it was storing like child one on the parent, I want to delete that first. And then I want to save all the ones there. So if child one is there again, it will save child one along with any others that I add. So to clear out everything first, you do parent.choices.clear. So that will basically remove everything from the parent. It will disassociate the children from the parent. And then what I want to do is I want to add everything back that will select it. So I can do parent.choices.extend. And the reason why I'm using extend here is because choices, uh, because it's a relationship on a mini to mini in SQL Alchemy, it behaves sort of like a list. And with lists, you have things like append and extend. With extend, you can basically pass another list and add everything from that list onto the current list, right? So I want to take form.choices.data, which is a list of objects, and extend choices, which is supposed to be a list of objects. So this is obviously empty because I just cleared it before, but this is the syntax. So I don't have to like loop over each choice. I can just extend it directly. And because this behaves somewhat like a form, it's going to work. And of course I need to commit everything. So db.session.commit and just like that. So now let me go ahead and try submitting this and it fails because there's no choices. And that's simple. I used the wrong name. I used choices instead of children. So let me just update this to be children, but the idea is still the same. So I'm extending the children on the parent. And now let me go back and select, let's say one, two, and four, hit submit, it saves. I'll stop the app and go into the database. So select star from parent child, and this needs to be from. And we see there are three in the database here. So one, 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 two, and one, four. So these three things represent the three things that I selected in the list here. So it's pretty easy to add them to the database. You see, it's really only one line of code that's doing most of the work, but before you just have to clear out all the children on the parent, and then you have to save it, of course. So if I want these to appear when I first load the page, let me start the app again. You see none of them are selected, right? So none of them are selected. What I want to do is I want to have the ones that are in the database be pre-selected for me. So you can imagine like an edit page that will already have the choices there selected for you. I can do that here. So the first step is to move the parent query up into the section above. So it applies to both cases, both the post and the get. And really it should go above the form. 
And then inside of the form where you where you instantiate, you would just pass a dictionary. And this should be data equals this dictionary. And then the keys and the values will be the name of the fields. So the keys are the name of the fields and the values would be the actual selected values. So the selected values in my case are all the children on the particular parent. But because this is a query select multiple field from the WT Forms Alchemy extension, I can simply pass parent.children, right? Because I already have this relationship defined on the parent, right? So this is going to be a list of the children and it's simply going to pass it to choices here. And choices is just the name of the field. So now I can save this and then I can load the page again. And now you see when it loads, it already has one, two, and four selected. I can deselect everything and select, let's say three and five, hit submit. And now when I reload the page, three and five are already selected. And I can also do this for any individual parent. So let me modify the code for that. So what I can do is I can do parent ID here and then parent ID. And then the query is just, uh, instead of looking for the first one, I can do filter by, or even I can do get. So get and then parent ID. Right, so it will only be looking at one parent. So before, everything was on parent one. So parent one has three and five selected. But if I go to parent two, so ID two, nothing selected. I'll select one, two, and three for parent two. And the form just needs to be updated because the action is pointing to the main one. So now it's going to use the same URL. So let me just go back and do that. So parent one is still fine. Parent two, I'll select child one, two, and three, hit submit. And now on the parent two page, I see uh, one, two, and three are pre-selected. But if I go to parent one, three and five are selected. And then if I go to parent three, none are selected because I didn't select any, but I'll select all five, hit submit. Now, when I reload the page, all three are selected for number three. And then of course, number two has one, two, and three. And number one has three and five. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is how to use checkboxes. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I can do here is before I use this field, I can actually create a new field that uses that as a base. So I can call this query select multiple field with checkboxes. So with checkboxes, and then it inherits from the original from WT Forms uh, Alchemy. And then I need to set two things. I need to set a widget. So the widget will be widgets.list widget. And this widget needs to come from WT Forms. So I can say uh, from WT Forms import widgets. And then go back down here. So widgets.list widget. And then you can have a prefix. So the prefix either appears uh, before the text or you can set this to false so it appears after. So I'm setting this to false because it looks better with the text to the right of the actual checkbox. If I put this to true, then it would be like the text and then the checkbox. And then you also want the options widget. So option underscore widget is widgets dot checkbox input, just like this. And now this should actually be prefix label instead of just prefix. And now that works. And now I can update my form to use this as a field instead of the original. So let me just copy that and put it in there. And now when I refresh the page, we see I have checkboxes instead of the default select list. And if I Go through each one, we see the check boxes are pre-selected because everything else is working the same. It's just I'm changing visually how it works. And with this, you can always change uh, the styling. You can change the label to be true. So let me just show you that. And it kind of moves everything over. Like I said, it looks kind of weird with check boxes, but if you wanted it to be like that, you could, but I'll leave this as false. Um, but everything beyond this point is just like CSS styling. So if you want the the dots to go away, you can just remove that in the styles and get it to work in the way that you want it to work. So that's everything that I wanted to show you in this video. Um, if you have any questions about how any of this works, feel free to leave a comment down below. Like I said, if you need help with anything like this directly, just look at my coaching program, I can help you there. 
Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.